so we understand clearly what it was like in biblical times. To understand how archaeology has improved our vision of the past, consider this 16th century etching by the Dutch master Rembrandt. It depicts Abraham casting out Hagar. But the patriarchal world conceived by Rembrandt was one of stone castles, fur-lined clothing, and even domesticated dogs. By contrast, archaeology has shown that the real world of the patriarchs was more like the lifestyle of desert Bedouin, living in tents. Archaeological texts, like the biblical text in Genesis 18, depict the obligation to show hospitality, killing a goat and serving a meal to strangers. Excavations at Ur, the city which the Bible places as Abraham's home, have revealed his early lifestyle within a commercial metropolis, complete with a pagan temple and its great ziggurat, the remains of which can still be seen today. Such evidence dramatizes the difficult choice Abraham made in exchanging the life of the city for that of the desert. Abraham, as you know, in the book of Genesis, uh, proceeded and to defeat the kings of the north who took his nephew Lot prisoner. And the text says in the book of Genesis chapter 14 that Abraham came as far as Dan. Now, of course, in those days, the name of the city was Laish and not Dan. And I imagine that the biblical uh, uh, copyists who wrote down, he found the name Laish, he says, who remembers Laish anymore? It's been gone and forgotten. So he says he's put down Dan. The archaeological excavations uncovered, actually, a great deal of the city of Laish with its very uh, massive fortifications of sloping rampart. And the great surprise in the excavation was to find the gate in the midst of these uh, ramparts. And what's more surprising was the fact that the gate is built with an arch. An arch, as we all learned in school, uh, were supposed to have been invented by the Romans. Well, here is an arch in a gate dated at least 2,000 years before the Romans. The remarkable thing about this discovery was that it stands as it was originally built. Abraham, no doubt, was invited to visit the city of Laish, and for all I know, may have gone through the gate before it was blocked. Testimony to the historicity of the patriarchs may be also seen from the biblical text itself. In Genesis chapter 14, we have a unique chapter describing the Battle of the Kings, which took place around the area of the Dead Sea and then up around the Kidron Valley in Jerusalem. Abraham's nephew Lot and his family were captured by a coalition of kings. And as Abraham went to the rescue, we have a list of all of the different kings and the places from which they came, and unique places that could not have been mentioned by later biblical writers only remembering facts. They would have had to have lived in those times. One of those terms is a term for the Dead Sea or Salt Sea. They're called Sidim. Discovery of archaeological tablets from other cultures, such as Egyptian or Elamite or Hurrian or Hittite or Amorite or Akkadian, all reveal terms very similar to the names of the kings and places mentioned in Genesis chapter 14. A testimony from archaeology and the Bible of the patriarchs and the times in which they lived. We have a link between the patriarchs who were Amorites and the people of Mari. Jacob, you find in Mari the very same Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as the digger Paro believed and as even Albright believed. But you have the name of Jacob, let us say Jacob, tens, dozens of time in Mari under the name of Jacob El, Jacob Ach, Jacob Am, etc. And in the Bible we have only Jacob. So the name Jacob in itself is the best argument that in the Bible is old material, embedded within old material, because the name Jacob is fashionable very much in the Mari documents, in the Mari period. Uh, we can go to geographical comparisons. Um, Mari covers what is called in the Bible Aram Naharaim, the erstwhile homeland of the Hebrews who came from Babylon, from Aram Naharaim, and Mari shows us cities like Nahor and Haran 
which are in the Bible ancestral habitats of the patriarchs. We have even one city in Israel, in Palestine, and that is Hazor. Hazor is mentioned to this day 20 times. In recent years, even the name of Canaan has been discovered. Kinachnu. Canaan is not any longer a term which we choose of choice for the second millennium, but it is the real term of Palestine. And here we have many customs with this, and even prophecy. Let me mention one custom. Uh, the custom of slaughtering an animal for a treaty, for a covenant. In the Bible we have two instances where we see Abraham, the covenant of God and Abraham, where he killed three, four uh, types of animals. Now in Mari they killed always the young, the foal. But uh, recently has been discovered a document in Mari where not a young of an ass was killed but a sheep and a calf, exactly like in the Bible. According to the biblical text, five cities once occupied a fertile plain alongside the area of the Dead Sea. These cities, and the two most famous, Sodom and Gomorrah, were destroyed by a great conflagration, fire sent from heaven. Many have questioned the historicity of these events, and so surveys in this area began to try to locate these ancient biblical cities. Richard Bainey in the 1960s came to the Dead Sea in the southern area and explored beneath the surface with sonar. He found trees in root level some 23 feet below the waters, indication of the existence of the seas at a much lower level. William F. Altwright had earlier said that these seas had risen and covered many of the cities. However, Bainey found no evidence of structures beneath the waters. Where then were these ancient biblical cities of the plains? One of the determining factors for the location of these five cities was that each one was located along a wadi, a dry riverbed that during the winter months fills with water and brings water to these cities. The site of Babel Dra, as well as the four other sites, archaeologists discovered ash deposits many feet in thickness covering the entire area of the cities. Evidence of the population at Babel Dra was indicated by the cemeteries and some of the shaft tombs and tombs in that area, some of which contained over 250 bodies. A city wall and gate were discovered. Later, two twin towers were discovered at the same site. The gate itself of the city was some 23 feet in thickness. One of the most remarkable discoveries at Babel Dra in Numera were the charnel house tombs, tombs which enclosed the dead above ground. When they were discovered, they found massive areas of burning in the rocks and in the area of the tomb. Originally thought this was a means of purifying the tomb after a period of the dead, kind of a ritual a cleansing would be have done. But they discovered, rather, that the tombs had been burned from the inside out, and yet that had occurred because the roof itself had caught on fire and collapsed, burning them the inside of the tomb. This was the case on every one of the Charnel House tombs discovered at the sites. Indication that some sort of burning had occurred, not inside the town, which is over this direction, but outside the town. And who would have destroyed these type of tombs through an invasion or some kind of uh, accidental burning? You don't destroy cemeteries in that way located outside the town. You destroy towns that way. Therefore, the only conclusion left to archaeologists is that some kind of natural disaster through an earthquake that created fires burnt this place. And that accords very well with the biblical evidence that an actual destruction of fire and brimstone sulfur raining down from heaven destroyed the site. Here at the site of Numera, thought to be ancient Gomorrah, ash deposits sometimes seven feet thick have been discovered, covering many of the houses that were in this area, some so sealing the rooms that all the contents were found intact. This whole area was destroyed by fire. Many of the stones are so brittle they crumble just in your hands. Inside these sealed rooms were found objects in almost a perfect state of preservation. But much of the ash deposit left it in a kind of a spongy charcoal state, indicating that the site would never be inhabited again, for it was not 